<laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Marriage is not for joyless people. Write it in capital letters. Marriage is not for joyless people. Marriage is not a rehab center. It's not for joyless people. Marriage is not a rehab center. You don't marry to go and be rehabilitated. It's not for joyless people. You don't marry to have joy. You have to have joy before you marry. Marriage is not for joyless people. That's why most people put pressure on their husband or wife. Because they are going into marriage with expectations. Great and mighty ones. And they miss it. You don't have joy. Then you marry somebody to give you joy. And because he doesn't have what it takes to give you joy, you're frustrated. Hey, you don't marry to get joy. If you don't have joy, don't marry. Don't go and make somebody's life sad. You have to have joy. You have to be complete in yourself before you marry. Because marriage is a contribution. Marriage is not for people that are broke emotionally, broke mentally. No, you have to have joy. You have to be complete in yourself in Christ. Then when you marry, you bring contribution to the relationship. She brings her own contribution. Now it makes two of you better. Teaching good. Some people just insist. That's what I want. That's what I want. Pastor, I like that girl. That's what I want. I remember somebody in this church. I warned him. I spoke to him. I called him to my office. I said, brother, please, I beg you, don't marry that girl. Two of you don't look compatible. I'm your pastor. I have seen. I'm not going to marry her. At the end of the day, she has to marry somebody, but not you. Two of you don't fit each other. He said, okay, Papa. Then again, he, he continued. I called him. I called her. I said, don't marry him. You will make your lives miserable, both of you. You don't fit. Ah, oh, Papa, don't say that. Ah, oh, Papa, don't say that. In fact, one of the days I was talking to him about not marrying her in my office and trying to make him see why he shouldn't do it. Because once they decide it's over, I can't say anything. But before they decide, at least I can persuade. She sneaked and it's dropped into our conversation and became bitter against me. Eventually, they got married because I couldn't stop them. And what kind of marriage did they have? Very miserable. Both of them are dead now. Both of them are dead. They killed each other. Both of them. I'm not happy saying it because it pains me. They could have been here today. They could have lived a more fulfilling and rewarding life. But they made that choice. And from the day they made that choice, their lives never remained the same. Never. The man will be in church when it's time for offering. He wants to bring out offering. She will land him a slap in his hands. Power! Take your hand out. And because he doesn't want a show, he will remove his hand. He can't put offering. That's not a marriage. But they made a choice. You make the choice, but you don't determine the outcome of the choice. The choice is yours, but the outcome is not in your control. I'm teaching good. That's just one out of a few others. Out of a few others. I remember one lady got married from this church, married somebody from somewhere. And the man stopped her from going to any church. Any. If she tries it, he will give her the beating of her life. Sometimes she had to sneak and come for counseling. What to do? I say, I don't know what you can do. I don't know. I don't know. Only the Lord knows the way to the wilderness. Me, I don't know. <laughs> Some people just insist what I want. This is what I want. Their parents will say no. Pastor will say no. Other brethren that are responsible will say no. Think about it. They say no. This is what I want. The book of Judges tells us about a man whose name is Samson. Judges chapter 14 verse 1. Put it up for me. 
Judges chapter 14 verse 1. And Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Next verse. And he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, get her for me to wife. Get her for me to wife. Next verse. Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren or among all my people that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines, unbelievers by today's standard? And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleased me well. I love her. If I don't marry her, I will die. It's a lie. If anything happens to her now, you don't marry her, you will still be alive. All those emotional jargons. Get them out of your head and think straight. Marry a sister in the church. They are, are tongue-talking sisters. Holy Ghost baptized. No, that one. Please let me. That's a very wrong idea about marriage. 